Alright people, welcome back to part 2 of my ban list prediction for the TCG July 1st uh, ban list for 2015. And uh, essentially I was just waiting. I was waiting for the OCG list and I was like, maybe I can get some, some set precedents from the OCG. Maybe I can go ahead and figure out you know, what we're going to deal with Necro because you know they have Necros hit harder than we do in the TCG and that deck's still number one, even over Infinity. Like, that's pretty crazy, right? Like, Infinity how broke it is and Necros are still the number one that of course number two being heroes with infinity plays and then number three being Neptibus so I was wondering like oh well you know Necros are still number one you're not really making any sales off the deck anymore OCG but I'm not sure if you're concerned with money as much as we are here in the TCG so uh, what you gonna do how are you gonna hit it you know how are we gonna get any precedents uh, you know are we gonna learn the path to how to hit Necros you know see what you did in July and maybe even copy it or maybe copy a necklace or something along those lines no 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 OCG Konami decided to do the biggest troll in the entire world like you can't do that OCG you can't so what you're seeing on your screen right now that's the message that they put in the V-Jump July 1st, OCG ban list, no changes. Are you fucking shitting me? Oh my god, if TCG does this, I would probably quit Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, you can't fucking do that shit. The ban list is meant to balance the game, and maybe it's coming from me because I'm a really conservative player, and I like the ban list because it hits the top decks and, you know, lowers their consistency, allowing for more of a diverse meta instead of just Necros, Kleez, Burning Abyss, Shadals, Tellers, you know, Rinse and Repeat. Because, you know, it gets really old, and when you really sit down and you look at those decks and compare it to, you know, what we have, even to the decks of the past sometimes, it's just like, yeah, no, no, this is not right for this deck to just be like this, and they definitely should get hit. But when you just have some broke-ass shit, like Necro still being stupid, with Cyber Dragon fucking Infinity, I could've, I thought for sure they were gonna ban that fucker in OCG, like, come on. Nah, not changes. Nah, he's fine, he's fine, like, you know, the freaking release it like you you know chicken right you know there was just a whole bunch of shit that should have been addressed and it wasn't in the ocg and i'm not sure if it just like eh fuck it we'll deal with it in worlds or you know after worlds or something but that's very disappointing like if i play ocg i'd be so disheartened i would probably have to take a break from Yu-Gi-Oh because that's not that's not fair that's not fair you I was waiting for this list. I was like, man, fuck this card. Man, fuck Cyber Dragon Infinity. I'm tired of this shit. I know, man, this card is so broken. I know, I know OCG's gonna go ahead and ban this card, you know? Let's go. And then, nothing. No changes. No changes! Not even just moving cards up or moving cards down. No fucking changes. You can't do that shit. You know? It's fine if you have, like, a little small list. You know, a little small list. Couple cards. That's fine. But no changes? You can't do that. If, if TCG Konami does that, oh my god, no. No, I would have to. I would have to quit you. I'd be like, nope, nope. I can't trust Konami. You give us this awesome, awesome April list, and then you're just like, hey, you know the April list? It was so fucking good that we're not gonna do any changes. Oh, what? What are you talking about? In like, three months, there, you know, there was nothing. There was nothing that happened. What? Infinity? No such card. No. No Necros? We didn't hit them hard enough. No, no, they're fine. They're fine. What are you talking about? They're not deck number one. We hit them like a whole bunch. We hit like a whole bunch of the cards. Shit. There's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. So, literally, I was going to just be like, yeah, let me see the OCG list. Oh, they hit this in Nicaragua. Okay, let's take that for set presidents and go ahead and reconstruct part two, come back for part two. Like, I shit you not. If I knew that freaking uh, the July list would have just been nothing, I wouldn't even have to come back for a part two. But I'm sad I was going to come back for part two. I made a couple adjustments. But, you know, I've had a lot more hits for Necros, but now I've just put it back to the way that really that OCG had it. Because I don't have any more presence, which would mean, of course, uh, even the LCG, the deck's still number one. So, clearly, you know, even being decks that have infinity. So, it clearly means that LCG didn't hit the deck hard enough. But, I don't have any presence on any other card. I mean, I guess I can talk about some of the hits that I was going to go ahead and make. But, in the end, no. Nah. <laughs> so, here we go. Part two, people. Part two. So, of course, we know. TCG... We're a lot more conservative, you know. We don't like locks. We don't like loops. We don't like FTKs. And we will even go to the extreme of hitting them beforehand. You know, if it causes a loop or, or some kind of OTK or something, especially looking at the longs of lines of, uh, oh yeah, look at this card, it's promoting FTKs. Or, oh, you know what happened to the OCG and we're about to release it here? They'll go ahead and hit it. So, uh, 
I, once again, have two band cards. Two band cards. Last time, part one, I had two band cards. But one of the band cards is the same, one of the band cards is different. So, yeah. So, let's go ahead and just talk about the first band card. And, I mean, this card doesn't need any introductions. It was on part one, it's on part two, it's on everybody's band list predictions. They're generally serve rituals. Yeah, this card should definitely be that. Just because you really only need one, especially when you use it with level, with level chain, you use it with level chain, you just banish it and just talk your opponent out, especially somebody in. That's not really something you should do, you know? You really can't compare releaser to Van D's, in which, you know, Van D's is a trap card that affects both players, and you can't search it, and you have to draw it. Releaser, you can go ahead and set it up with a level chain, go ahead and banish it, and then literally just lock your opponent out of special something just because you're using a ritual mechanic, and it really does suck. That, you know, we had to hit this card because, um, you know, the popularity of the game with Necrons, but, you know, it's just one of those cards that shouldn't be legal in general for the ritual summoning mechanic, you know, and we might as well just go ahead and ban it, you know, rituals, you don't need this card, no one needs this card, this card is generally and blatantly unhealthy for the game, just being able to just be like, oh, really, sir, you can't special summon, you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh, and there's a ton of people are saying, like, oh, at least it shouldn't be hit, because we have so many outs to it, so it's not even good anymore, like, but what if you don't get that, that out, I mean, unless, you what are you gonna still run, oh, man, that's a release least combo, so I'm gonna run fucking, uh, you know, Frickin' Book of Eclipse? Book of Eclipse? That card's not even good. That card's not even good. But because it gets you out of the gym lock, it just goes up a little bit higher, you know. You know, triple rota and, and triple bull blader. What the fuck is a bull blader? Triple DD warrior? Like what? Yeah, but be just because, just be fucking cuz, you know. The gym lock, you know how you have a couple answers. It doesn't deserve to be hit. Like you shouldn't have to run those cards just because of this card. You, know, you should be able to make your deck the way that you want to and not have to worry about running shitty cards like Book of Clips just because the gym lock. That shouldn't even be a thing. Yeah, for the ban releaser. There, there's no reason for this card to be legal. You know? and, and and it's sad because I even if you kill Necros, we still got to worry about this in the future. Pretty much Konami cannot make another ritual deck because then this deck, then that deck will of course have this card up their sleeve, you know? It's, it's not the first time where a particular deck brought notice to particular cards and that card got banned because of it, you know, look at Return from a Different Dimension. Was that card busted before Dragon Rose? Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty busted, you know. It would pay half your life once the cards you could pay any time and summon all of your banished monsters, that's pretty busted. But then when you put in the hand of Dragon Rose, they broke the crap out of it and it got banned. Respectively, you know, accordingly. Uh, you know, even in, uh, card, like, card destruction and, you know, even Gold Sight got addressed, you know. It's just, it only takes a deck to make you recognize the card. To allow the card to get hit, and you know, if Necros never existed, this card would never get hit, probably. But because of Necros, and you can see them blatantly exploiting it, especially with the Wall of Chain, we gotta go ahead and release it. So we gotta release the releaser and go ahead and, well, not release them, we gotta lock them up. So this would be the Jin, you know, prisoner of rituals, because he, he's going to jail, he's going to the ban list. Oh, alright, so that's the first ban card. Alright, and the second ban card, and uh, it's not Constructs, people, because I know you would say, oh, it's Construct again, Daniel? Like, no, no. No, I went a little bit too hard on shit also the first time. So, second card banned, I have Royal Magical Library. Yep, yep, yep. Once again, it, it, it's the same predicament. Like, it's, it, Royal Magical Library has always been that stupid card, you know? You can clearly tell with the design that Konami didn't intend for you to, you know, keep this for a while on the field and great encounters. It has zero freaking attack. You know, they expected maybe for you to set it, and then your opponent tag into it, and then you, you know, play a couple of spell cards, and you know, draw a card, that's, you know, that's totally fine. But when you use it in FTKs and just sacky plays in general, where you're plusing off of plays you were already going to do, like, that's when it gets dumb. And if you guys have not seen the Chicken Race FTK, you know, people are trying to point fingers at, oh, well, well go ahead and ban Magical Explosion. Alright, then I'll just play Blast in the Room. Oh, well, go ahead and hit Chicken Race. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because TCG Konami's gonna go ahead and hit a card on the TCG list that's not even out in TCG. Oh, genius, genius. No, but when it comes to SDKs, and we've seen this before, you know, uh, they've, they've banned Self-Destruct button, they hit, you know, uh, uh, Final Countdown to 1, they banned the Morphing Charge before we even got to do the Jackpot 7 card. It, TCG's like, no, 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 you're not playing that kind of game over here. You wanna do that side of shit? Take it over to freaking OCG land where they're just like, everything is fine, everything is happy over here. But over here in TCG, I'm like, no, fuck that shit. So, they're pretty, they're gonna look at the, the, 
that FDK, and they're going to be like, hmm, all right, well, you're not really plussing off of, you know, the chicken races and the terraformings and pseudo spaces. No, you're not even plussing, you know, you're just zeroing out. You're drawing cards, which is just really powerful. It's, you know, you're upstarting, but, you know, that, that's fine. It's a one for one, okay. Oh, what is this? You're, you're not negging off of them, but then you're getting spell counters on this royal magical library? This zero attack monster that your opponent's easily going to kill next turn? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, it's gaining counters. They're drawing. They're plussing. They're drawing. Whoa, they just got through their entire deck. Whoa, whoa. What are they planning? Oh, oh, then they hit you with a life equalizer? Oh, ooh, okay. I haven't seen that card in a while. And then magical explosion. Hmm. Hmm, yeah. Well, if you look at it closely, it's pretty obvious. Even... They would eventually going to pattern out, if you chicken race without Royal Magical Library, it's going to pattern out resources, but then it can get to those Royal Magical Libraries because of the way that the deck is ran into chicken races and the upstep. You know, they're not making the three sorts of things. Eventually, they're going to go ahead and get a Royal Magical Library, and then the ball starts rolling because now you're just plussing off of nothing. You were going to already do those plates, those chicken races, them terraforming, them upstarts, some pseudo spaces, but now you're plussing off of it? So instead of negging like you should be, using cards that even you out and zero you out, and then plussing off the Royal Magical Library. It's busted. It's busted. This card's always been unhealthy, and it's about time it just gets banned. You know, they want to go ahead and ban it, and then allow it to say you can only use its effect once per turn. More power to you. But right now, you can just keep on looping it and looping it and draw, 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 draw. You know, this with ignites too. It's it's just stupid. And you know, it sucks that we have to take another card away from ignites. You know, where it's just like, man, first you take the the, the master key little lock. Now you're gonna take the more magical library. Yes, because that's not the ignites place. It, it, I don't understand, like, it, it seems like every single time I see Ignites, they're just like, oh, look at this freaking Master Key Boodle loop, it's stupid. Oh, look at this Royal Magical Library, it's stupid. Hey, look, we can freaking burn you with an FTK, like, like, can Ignites not just stand on their own and be a decent deck? Why do they always gotta do something stupid and sacky? Like, I, I don't know, I don't know, but yes, they gotta take this Royal Magical Library away from me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ignites, and I know you haven't even came out in CCG yet, but you can play without this card, because... Clearly, you're gonna break the shadow gate. It's already breaking the shadow of the chicken race, and it's been busted in the past. So let's just go ahead and get rid of this card. You want to go ahead and rot it? Sure, more we'll power to you. But yeah, go ahead and ban it. All right. So there we go. Those are my two banned cards. Yeah. So uh, tell me what you guys think about that. Tell me what you guys think about my bans. All right. So next we are moving on to limited, and there's not a lot of changes, I must say, from part one. But we'll go ahead and go through it. Of course, starting it off, Bronic, Necros of Bronic, set precedence. You know, lower the consistency. You know, clearly, Bronic is one of the key cards uh, that's played in Necros, and you know, even OCG hit to one. But you know, these hits that I'm gonna do, they're literally blatant copies off of the April 2015 uh, OCG ban list because they hit Necros harder than we did, and you know, it's easy, much easier to follow, especially with this being the world's list. Just go ahead and do what they do. Now, does that mean that Necros are gonna win worlds? Probably, probably. I mean, Jadals are dead. Tellers aren't dead. You know. They didn't get hit in the OCG at all, and, you know, the only card that they really have hit is Rota, so, unless we hit Teller Knights, Teller Knights will essentially be at full power besides missing one Rota. Um, Cleese? Cleese have topped more over here than they did over there. They haven't really done anything, and they have triple skill drain. A triple skill drain and, tri you know, a little triple skill drain, triple lose one turn. So, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of Cleese. Uh, we really don't have to worry about the hero with the Infinity, because that won't be for us, so that's not going to be there. Nepa is not going to be there. Of course, Necros, if we hit it both he here to the same degree that we hit that we hit it over there, and it's still the top deck over there, it really depends how it stacks up to, uh, you know, decks over here. Burning the Abyss can't play. Yeah, I'd say, depending on how we how hard we hit Necros, it's going to be between Teller Knights, maybe Klee's, and, of course, Necros. And, you know, if Necros win worlds, you know, you're definitely going to get hit, so, eh, screw it. But, yeah, first card, Necros of Bionic, go ahead and hit it down to one. Next card, Necros of Unicorn, hit that down to one. Uh, this card is definitely a key player. Uh, I've been watching a little bit more Necros plays, and, yeah, I, I, I can understand why they hit this. Uh, not only do you get to go ahead and discard it, to go ahead and target a Necros card in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. You know, essentially, like, a, a return, no, uh, uh, um, a month three cards. It's a necklace card, so I don't even know. But you literally won four and you pitch this, get the card back. So essentially, it no one avoids the whole fact that you hit Bionic to one. Because you can just search out Bionic and then use the Bionic and then Unicorn, get the back to Bionic and then use the Bionic. So, uh, you know, it's definitely, definitely 
one of the key cards also it's a pretty key card and um the the gin lock with uh with the sending the the herald through um you know the Kledomir and you know you don't want to kill Necros yet and then Cody seems like you know uh OCD doesn't want to kill Necros and if you want to kill Necros just break apart their mirrors that's all you have to do is just shatter the mirrors but you know instead of going after the you know the Kaleido mirror and only because it's the, the original summons general they just hit Unicorn which not only uh you know gets your your Bronic back but then also is one of the key cards that you use for the Kaleido mirror so you know hitting Unicorn and you know it's powerful on field effect to negate the effect of all face hub launches our special summon from the extra deck too uh, Unicorn is just a powerful card and totally worthy of being one. I, you know, I'm seeing a ton of people damage prediction. Most people don't say Brown is down to one, they generally keep that too, but the, the, the majority of things when it comes to hitting that is definitely in a quarter one. So, it's that precedent, uh, it's a clear hit, so go ahead and hit it down to one. And then, of course, Necro Cycle. Uh, Necro Cycle, being able to go ahead and uh, Monster Born your uh, Necros is a very powerful play as well. And um, essentially, set precedence from OCG as well. Uh, it sucks that we have to go after one of the mirrors, but when you have a mirror like this, it's kind of ridiculous, you know. Uh, you know, Kaleido is pretty ridiculous because you get to go ahead and use monsters from your extra deck. That's ridiculous, and even Kaleido is ridiculous because you get to go ahead and just banish monsters from your graveyard. But, uh, you know, at least those monsters still have to be in your hand. This, on the other hand, this, you can have nothing. You can have literally nothing and just go ahead and just get a cycle and, you know, tribute from your hand or field to go ahead and summon Necros from your from your graveyard, that's pretty powerful. So, um, yeah, we can go ahead and hit uh, cycle down to one, just to set precedence from OCU, but all the mirrors are pretty busted, right? It seems like they, they hit cycle, so we'll just go ahead and copy them, and I say we'll just copy their hits, and, and then the deck will win worlds, and then it'll get hit again. So, yay, enjoy worlds, people. Enjoy worlds. All right, next card we have at one, we definitely have Mind Crush. Like I said, this card, from the beginning to the middle of the format, this card is the most busted tra trap card, you know, before we lose one turn. And, literally, uh, it's not a fair card. It is not a fair card. Just being able to go ahead and be like, oh, you're playing your deck correctly? Uh, Mind Crush? Let me go ahead and call that that card that I just saw, because you have to reveal it. Oh, and let me get this in your hand. Like, yeah, that's not fair. Like, you even, you look, you compare this to Mistake, and it's just like, wow, what the fuck? Like, it's not even fair. Like, this card all copies, I mean, look in your hand, and it's just like, wow. No. It's just like, wow. You know, we had, it's not even risk that, oh, well, if you call it wrong, you have to discard a random card. Like, no. No. No, because you saw them search. They were playing their deck correctly. You saw them searching. You're going to go ahead and just mind that exact card. As long as it's not a card at one, or you know that uh, there's only one copy left in that, you're going to go ahead and see their hand. And, you know, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. You get to see your opponent's hand. You know, you know, a good majority of their plays for the next upcoming turns, and you know, that's just power. So... A card that gets powerful should not be at three. Definitely not. You know, this card has been at one before, and they're like, oh, well, you haven't seen much play, you move to two, oh, move to three, and now, look, it's just broken. Like, this card will never be bad. As long as this game of Yu-Gi-Oh is as fast as it is, and, you know, how searchy and how consistent the top decks are generally the most consistent, you can't have a card like Minecraft. It's, you know what I'm saying? You want to go ahead and combat the searchiness and the high consistency of the top decks with your deck that's lower consistency? Fine. Run Mistake. That's fine. You know, more power to you. But then when consistent decks can get other consistent decks and then everybody can run this card, i.e. Minecraft, then it gets stupid. You know, it's, it's just like up there with freaking vanities where it's just like, yeah, everybody runs through you because it's the most busted shit. Minecraft is that card. You know, not even everybody can run lose one turn, but everybody can run Minecraft. So, yeah, this that card should definitely be limited. All right, next card I have that one is definitely Star Seraph Sovereignty. I know there's a couple people that are saying like, oh yeah, hit you know hit Star Seraphs, go ahead and hit Separate, like lower your consistency. Like no, that would that would kill Star Seraphs in general. Just lower Sovereignty. If we hit Sovereignty down to one, just like OCG did set precedent, then there's no need to go ahead and hit Separate, which means that you know yes, Star Seraphs you got hit as a deck in general, but you know you still got three scepters, you which are your your key searcher cards. You can still play. You only have one Sovereignty that sucks, but you, you have a lot of other. Uh, Star Seraph cards that you can go ahead and run, you know, if we hit your scepter, you know, you're pretty much done, but hey, if we leave you your something, you know, if we leave you your scepter and just take your something down to one, you still have your Star Seraph plays, but the engine is dead, you know, there's a handful of people that also don't even think that this engine should be hit, and I'm sorry, this engine is busted, you shouldn't be able to just go plus four like this, I'm sorry, it may be a little bit inconsistent, but it's worth the, it's worth the risk, because when you get it off, you go so plus, it's stupid, so, Definitely, definitely go ahead and just hit this engine by hitting Sovereignty down to one. So that presence from OCG, and it's also definitely the correct hit. Alright, so uh, next hit I have, and uh, you know how conservative I am. I literally hit all decks, I must warn you. Uh, 
I, I hit necros, and not as hard as I wanted to hit them, but I hit necros. I hit Shadals, I hit Teller, I hit Cleese, I hit Burning Abyss. All the top five decks got it. Uh, some got it a little bit more than others, uh, and I kind of tried to balance it with according to, you know, uh, is this their first hit? Is this their first, first accusation? You know, I'm trying to be like a police officer. I'm like, hey, you know, what is this? Your first, your first ticket? Your first ticket? All right, we're gonna be leaning out. What? This is like your second ticket? This is like your third ticket? All right, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get a little bit harder. The next card I have hit. This is my clear hit. I have Scout to one. Uh, Scout is the key card in the deck, and when you run cards that can easily get your your Scout, the, the deck the, the duel gets started. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I know Sacrifice is a powerful clip card as well, and that card that one, but Scout, you gotta go down to one, two. I was actually thinking, you know, if we put Scout down to one, will we put Sacrifice up to like two, but for right now, we'll just leave it. We'll leave it, you know. Yeah, it's not like TCG to go ahead and hit a deck and then bring up cards in the deck and shift cards around some of our OCG thing, and, you know, they didn't even really do anything with Cleese, they did nothing. So, uh, you go ahead and just hit Scout. Scout's the card to go ahead and hit. Or it's consistency down the one, and I know that sucks because, you know, Cleese are players will be like, oh, I only have one Scout, let me get space. And, hey, you know, we could just ban Scout. How about that, you know? But, uh, Cleese, they're, they're a powerful deck. You know, they're a pendulum based deck. I already made them powerful just due to the pendulum mechanic. But then you have this card that blatantly just goes ahead and searches for every single Cleese card you need. It's the key card in the deck. And literally, sometimes the deck is, wouldn't even be as remotely as good without Scout. It's card to the point finger at. It already has precedent, set precedence on being on the list. And generally, you know, you can't even really point a finger at Lose One Turn because this deck was already being really good before Lose One Turn. So. You know, the, the April list are just like, damn, Cleese are freaking dead, man. They hit Vandy's down to one, and Skill Drain down to one, and Sacrifice down to one, and Scout to two. Damn, this deck is fucking dead. This deck is done. And then it turns out to be like the third best deck. Like, that's when you know that just through the pendulum mechanic alone and the, you know, keeping the, the two scouts, especially when you're just like, oh, well, Scout went down to two. That's fine. You know, I still got Monolith. I'm going to go ahead and throw triple uh, uh, Summoner's Art. I'm totally fine. You know, triple Pot. I'm, I'm going to get that Scout. I'm going to get it eventually. And, you know, when you just, you know, sitting there hoping for Scout and hoping to pray, and you really can't get the duel started without it, and you're running tricking triple Summoner's Art for it, that's when it gets a little bit ridiculous. So if we drop the count down to one, I mean, how many Summoner's Arts are you going to run for it? Are you going to run triple? I mean, it's really inconsistent, but hey, more power to you, you know, try to get that one scout, because that one scout is worthy. When you have cards like Stratos ban, I would much rather have scout ban over Stratos, because, you know, Stratos may tutor heroes, but when you have this card like this who tutors Cleave, I mean, it's not even a comparison. So I'm sorry, but definitely scout down 2-1. So, there you go, there is my Klee hit. You know, it's deck number 3, totally worthy of the hit. Yeah, arguably deck number two, deck number two, deck number three, you know, the decks, the top five decks are always shifting depending on, you know, what's, what's the SR ARG that we're looking at, but, you know, they're definitely, I'd say they're definitely top three, so definitely worthy of just getting hit, scout getting hit down to one. You know, we're not making any sales off of it, we're done, clues are done, so let's just go ahead and move on. You know, we hit it enough and we thought it was going to be dead, but no. Alright, so next, uh, we're going to go ahead and do some hits. To deal with Noted, and you're probably saying like, well, you're gonna, you're gonna hit cards before Noted, and nope, well, go ahead and say it, there you go, no, I'm not hitting Institution, and the reason why I'm not gonna hit Institution is because I totally think that Konami wants to promote Institution, you know, they want to promote Institution, they want to promote Noted, they're looking at the cards in the meta right now, and they're like, you know what, there's not a lot of decks that can really utilize this, you know, if we go ahead and, you know, and hit the Star Guys engine, and, uh, you know, the monster that summon doesn't get its effect, so it's not even like Telenet can really use it, uh, you know, what that can really use it. I mean, Shadals, but, you know, when my hits Shadals, they're, they're gonna have to make some changes. So, you know, they're like, hey, Noden's not even that bad. I mean, he's not even that bad. We're gonna put him in the 10. You know, three Insta Fusion. You gotta buy three 10s for three Nodens. Bam, we made our money. You know, so, it's, and then we hit Insta Fusion. But I wouldn't be surprised. And I know Konami already looked at OTG and saw, you know, some of the Saki loops and things that. Noden's done, so instead of hitting Instafusion and just lowering Noden, they're gonna go after cards that make Noden sacky with the loops and the FTKs and stuff like that, and then leave Noden alone. <coughs> uh, excuse me, for this list. So, uh, starting off, my first limited card when it comes to addressing uh, the loopiness and stupidity of Noden, I have Refusion. Yeah, you know, who would have thought that I would have to go ahead and hit Refusion, but, you know, clearly in the hands of Noden, this card is busted. So, 
Essentially, it's a premature burial for Noden, so uh, you pay 800 life points and you select one of your future monsters in your graveyard and a special summon it, and it'll host this card. But of course, Noden's uh, effect is not, you can only activate the effect of Noden once per turn. So essentially, you go activate, you know, it's a fusion summon Noden. And then I think they either use like some fusion synchronous or something like that, or uh, some other card like the, the Vylon Cube or whatever, or some other card that I'll go. You know, activate, ref activate Instafusion, summon Noden, and Noden summon that monster, who, of course, once you use the Synchro material, will go ahead and get you uh, the Search of an Equip spell, of course, being Refusion. Refusion, summon Noden, do it again, do it again, do it again, like, no, 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 that, that, that's dumb, that's dumb, that's really dumb, and, uh, just being able to go ahead and just tutor Secret plays over and over again, and loop, you know, and loop into Deloren, who, of course, is at one because of his many loops, but then you, you know, exploit this one Deloren and loop the living hell out of him with, uh, you know, Tempest Magician, OT, you know, FTK, and, uh, and a deck that run a lot of spell cards, it's just kind of dumb, and, and, and we're gonna have Instafusion at three, and we're gonna have Noden at three, and we're gonna have Refuge at three, and you literally just loop the hell of it and exploit it, it's really dumb, you know, it's really dumb, so, you know, it's a card that they're not making any money off of. It's an old card, and you know, it, it, you know, sometimes it just takes one card to look at and exploit it. Just go ahead and hit it. So instead of hitting Instafusion, instead of hitting Noted, make your money off of that. Just go ahead and just hit Refusion, so you don't have you don't have the ability to go ahead and you know loop and break the shit out of it and you know have to carry your opponent with it. Cause that's dumb. Sorry. All right. So that's the first hit, and then the next hit that I have is a uh, copy in the OCG, uh, Blaze Phoenix, the Burning Bombardment Bird. Yeah, this card is also worthy of being hit down to one, uh, especially with the loops that it has with Noden and uh, with the loops that it has with Ignites and uh, it's blatantly just a dumb card, right? It's just like, oh yeah, burn your opponent for all the field and you summon it again, burn again, summon it again, burn again, and you know, and, you know, FTK your opponent, you know. I really didn't understand that at first, but now I blatantly understand it. So, well, you know, with the Refusion going down to one and Blazing Phoenix the Bombardment Bird going down to one, you know, we can keep, well, Konami will think, you know, we can keep Noden at three, we can keep Insta Freezing at three, we can make our money off the ten, and we don't have to worry about doing, doing any fucking sacky shit, because you need three Bombar Blazing Phoenix Bombardment Bird, and Refusion with Noden is just a blatantly and unhealthy card that leads to, you know, FDKs and shit in general. So, you know, we'll go ahead and just hit those two and be done with it. Right? Right. Alright, so next I have my first Shadal and Satella hit. So, uh, if you remember part one, I ended up banning Construct off the set precedence off the OCG, and it seems like they're happy with that. They did no changes, so they're not, they're even thinking like, man, man, we hit Shadal's really hard. You know what? You can have one Construct. Like, no, they didn't even do that. They left it alone. So, I guess Shadal's are still kind of dead over there. I mean, I heard that they fused their trains, but hey, they're not even one of the top three decks, so there you go. So, uh, gonna go ahead and do my hits. So, Limited and limited this time. I have El Shadal Construct. I, I went a little bit too hard This is actually Shadal's first direct hit and you know when I always sat down and thought about it I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you know, I went a little bit too hard. I was I you know I mean I was I wrong. No, I was just doing set precedence off of OCG, but you know for uh, CCG it was a little hard, you know, you know, it didn't seem like we nearly hit Shadal as much as uh, OCG does Clearly, you know, we never even hit it directly, you know, it has not even got a direct hit So this will be its first direct hit and definitely construct the one you should go ahead and hit uh, You know to avoid hitting Shadal Fusion and just you know blatantly killing the guy We're just gonna hit construct you get one construct. That's it. No, uh, you know construct uh, Oh, you know, you have extra monster. Oh, I'm gonna throw a construct. Oh, you have extra monster and throw a construct Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and fuse construct with the El Shadal Fusion into construct like no you get one construct And you know what Con one construct has one is you know not only the correct spot, but it's also justified. It, it, you know, I have no complaints if Kushuk went out the way, because Kushuk is the most powerful card in the Shadal monster, you know, in the Shadal deck. It's the stupidest one. And I'm sorry to say that, you know. Uh, so that's my first hit. I actually have one more hit. I only have two hits, because these decks have kind of been falling as of late. You know, uh, Burning Abyss and Cleaver have kind of stepped up more than Shadals and uh, Tellers, but uh, they're still worthy of hits, and, you know, they're worthy of their first hits. So we're going to go ahead and give them their first hits. Direct first hits. So, um, there is my card to one for Shadals, but then I have my card at one for Satellers. Um, once again, I have Satellers Trigger. I still think this card is the card to hit. This card is dumb. You shouldn't be able to go ahead and trigger your opponent three times. Three times is ridiculous. That three, 21 times three, that is a nice chunk out of your life points, picking something out of your hand, uh, being able to go ahead and uh, float 
because you know this card essential girl has a key materials you get to go ahead and uh summon a time monster from your graveyard and essentially you just get to go ahead and just uh you know loop the hell out of your uh your call hunt to your wastes it's just blatantly unhealthy you know uh, generally, when you look at Teller Nice, it's just like, well, you know, I run triple fingers training, I run triple call of the haunted, I run triple erases, or double oasis, and it's like, why do you run this card? Oh, because I have triple trip. Trip, go ahead and bounce everything, and I get to go ahead and bounce my my fingers trains and my call haunted, and then use them again, and blazing, and blatantly plus off of just summoning this ridiculous monster. You know, it's, it's the same one of the same reasons why Giant Trinket should remain banned because you get to go ahead and return those cards that are already used back to your hand. You know, especially when you're just you're going ahead and using them in the materials, it's just like generally like man then it sucks that I'm I'm gonna use the same material and my uh, my wastes and my uh, my limit reverse they're just stuck they're just sticky cards on my field but oh Triv go ahead put them all back oh what you do something else oh Triv again Triv again Triv again and I'm a teller I play and you know I've done this a handful of times I have summoned two three trishes you know in a row and one duels because of it and yeah it's blatantly the broken card in the deck you know a lot of people are like oh I hit Nova and I'm just like why I still don't understand why one hit Nova. I mean, I get, oh, it's a counter trap. You know, oh, this Dark Deck has a counter trap. Blah, 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 blah. But it doesn't make Teller Knights good at all. Like, you'll you'll go ahead and hit Nova, but then keep the, you know, the Altairs, the Nebs, the Trivs, all that three. I mean, aren't those the key plays? I mean, I play Teller Knights, and I've won a handful of those without even activating Nova or even getting a Nova. Does Nova help? Yeah, sure. But it's just the luck of the draw, just like anything else in the deck. You know, it's not like I'm just, um, it's not like I'm in front of you. Like, you're literally like, comparing Lola to Infernity Barrier, but you can search Infernity Barrier in front of you. you no, know, it's Teller Knights, it, the Neb literally said, you know, when this card is summoned, you can go ahead and search for a Teller Knight card, and you can search for freaking uh, Nova, then, yes, I can I can totally understand why you're going to hit Nova, because you can literally go, Deneb, search for Nova, set the Nova. Yes, I get that. But no, you can't. You draw it just like any other card, and it's literally a fair card. I'm activating it, tributing my Teller Knight, destroy, destroy your card, and then drawing a card. I'm giving up a known for an unknown, and I'm negating through a counter trap that's how marker types have you know like if you want to go ahead and hit nova i mean what's next you're gonna go ahead and hit secret move you're gonna go ahead and hit the zephyr counter trap it's just like no like at that point then no archetype can get a counter trap because then you're just always going to compare it to barrier i.e alpha you're just going to know you're just going to be like oh well this deck has a counter trap so go ahead and hit it and literally we're just going to have a ban list flooded with counter traps for no justified reason other than the fact that you don't like counter traps like I, I don't understand. I don't understand. And I'm not being biased here as a Teller Knight player either. I'm just saying, that's not the correct hit. You know, like I said, if you could search for Alpha, if you could search for Nova, then yes, hit it. Definitely hit it. But you can't. So, you're literally just drawing it into any other deck, you know? Hey, you know, your Sinjus, they play, you know, triple secret move and they draw into it. They get your secret move. Hey, you know, that's just the luck of the draw. But, unless they can search it, which of course they can't, it's not a justifiable hit. That's not what Teller Knight they're beating you with. They're beating you with multiple trades, they're beating you with the Altair Dinev loop and the high consistency of having Dinev. So, if we just lower the consistency of Dinev and hit Triv, you know, that would be a nice first initial hit. So, yes, I have Triv down to one. And I think Triv is the problem. I think the card that, that's the card that should go down to one, not Nova. Alright, so, there you go. Those are all my limited cards. So, a couple of changes, a couple of the same, but uh, a little bit more well-rounded. So next we're going to move on to cards at 2. So starting it off, we have another Necro set. We have Manju, uh, the, the 10,000 hands 2 set precedence off of OCG. They put Manju down to 2. I really thought, especially with Necros being the number one deck in OCG, I thought they were going to go ahead and uh, tweak it a little bit more. I literally thought they were going to go ahead and die. Well, we tried Manju and Sendry at 1, and that didn't work. So we put Manju 2 and Sendry 3, and that clearly didn't work because that just made them even more consistent and you know just one uh, card off what we have so i thought they were going to go ahead and put manju down to one and send you down to two and then they would have three monsters that can go ahead and do the play instead of five or six like we have and no i didn't do any changes so they still had manju to two and kept sending you to three and necros was still just as busted as ever it's still number one deck in the ocg and literally all the precedents i have is copy them you know, I, I, I don't know how much disdain TCG has for Necros to really put um, a true prediction. I mean, if you wanted to, I'm, I can go ahead and say what I was going to go ahead and hit in, um, in Necros, uh, but I can't even guarantee it. So, uh, I was going to have Bronic to 1, Unicorn to 1, Psycho to 1, Manju to 1, Senju to 2, and Shriet. And Shriet, if you see Shriet, because that's the problem. With all these hits, if we go Brownlet to one, Unicorn to one, Sakura to one, Manju to two, they're just go, okay, triple shit, 
triple rota. You know, and that's what I'm saying. And you know, with Rota being able to select both Street and Colophilus, you know, there's no reason not to play triple Rota. And then the deck would just be just as consistent as it is now. I'm probably assuming that's probably what they do in the OCG. But as I'm saying, Street, if you really look at it, it is, it is one of the key cards in the deck. Going ahead and just being your entire tribute cost for the Necro uh, monster and being able to search for a warrior, being able to search for that Bionic, being able to search for that Colossalus, being able to search for that Trish, you know, it gets a little bit ridiculous. And, you know, definitely, I was thinking maybe Colossus down to 1, but I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and try Senju and Colossus 2, Manju to 1, and then all the other cards that I was thinking has at 1 at 1, and see what that does as, you know, the next tip for Necros. But, and I, I thought maybe that's what OCG was going to do, maybe we are going to copy it, but nope, 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 they did no, nope, they did no hit, so the only precedent I have is just, hey, do what they did. Will Necros still be good? Probably, I mean, you know, it's the number one deck in OCG facing down Infinity, so, you know, here they have a little bit more competition because I got to go against Burning Abyss and Cleese and Shadows and Tele Knights, you know, and all the, you know, tier two shit like, you know, Ritual Beast and Senju, stuff like that, but, uh, will it still be number one? Probably, probably. Will it win Worlds? Possibly, but then if it wins Worlds, then we can go ahead and hit it again and actually kill it this time. So, you know, let's just hope that maybe OCG not hitting it and us just copying off of OCG for the world's list, that hey, maybe it'll win worlds and then it'll be dead for the next list in, what, October, I think? Maybe? So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and have Manju 2. Is that enough of a hit? Definitely no. Manju should be at 1 and Senju should be at 2. And it really sucks that you gotta go to Senju, but then you'll just replace your Manjus with Senjus, because literally Senju just does everything Manju does, because generally you want to go ahead and search a Necro's monster, because your Necro monsters are going to tutor to your plate, you know? It's not like Sonic Bird, where it's like, oh yeah, Sonic Bird, go ahead and search me a mirror. I doubt it. I doubt they're going to play Sonic Bird. But, um, you know, Senju tutors your monsters, Manju tutors both, and it's just like, ah, yeah, this is good, but hey, what you gonna do? Just copy up OCG and hope and pray that maybe it won't be as bad, or maybe hope and pray that, you know, TCG does it a little bit farther, because, you know, OCG hit it, and then we just it, hit it. Little 3 of them, too. There you go, there you go, there you go. That's our hands off, there you go. Necros hit for these TCG. They ain't gonna do shit now. They only got two brown it. What? Necros is still the top deck? And OCG and TCG? Oh, we done fucked up, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, Konami. Ah, anyway, moving on to the next card at 2, I got Monster Game. No, one for another promotion. Yeah. And are Inferno a fine deck? Yes, they are. Are they uh, a good deck? Yeah, they're okay. Will they ever be top tier? Not, not, not in this meta. Definitely not. They're too inconsistent. You know, the two base out of too inconsistent. That's like saying that White Swarms are going to be the top deck because, you know, JD's power for Monster. Yeah, but you're inconsistent. You're really inconsistent. You know, you're, you're trying to go out against these consistent ass decks like Tellers and, and Cleese and, and Necros and, you know, even to an extent, Burning Abyss, because they're just going to one-up you with background, you're eventually going to patter out, you know, and run out of place. But, uh, you know, if you want to go ahead and put more Inferno, get that, you want to try that being the new cash count, then hey, more power to you. So, um, except for the OCG, they moved Monster Gate up to 2, go ahead. Uh, I think they moved up to 3, but first I moved up to 2, so we'll go ahead and move to 2 first, and then next time we'll move up to 3. So, uh, Monster Gate at 2. Next, I have my first, uh, Shadal, my, oh no, my second Shadal hit. I have El Shadal Fusion to choose. And I know a lot of people are saying, like, oh, hit it down to one, hit it down to one. If we hit Construct down to one, I mean, you know, one of the major problems is going ahead and just going Construct, El Shadal Fusion, Construct, you know, Construct again, and then that Construct, go ahead and grab you or something, like, yeah, that's, that's the kind of problem. But if we lower Construct down to one, then you're going to have to fuse into something else if you fuse in Construct. So, uh, especially with Shadal, this being their first hit in the TCG, the uh, direct hit, they're probably going to go ahead and try El Shadal Fusion at two first. You know, Construct 1, I should into 2, and you know, if it's continuing to persist to be a problem, you can go ahead and hit it down to 1, but, you know, is it more powerful than, uh, Shell Fusion? Well, with Construct at 1 is, but with Construct at 1, at least you can go, you know, Construct, I should Fusion into Construct, so, uh, does it worth the, uh, being hit down to 2? Yeah, definitely. Maybe even 1, but let's go ahead and try that 2 for the TCG as uh, initial hit. Alright, next I have my second hit for Telenerds, and... Uh, just like last time, I have the Neb down too. I think hitting the consistency of the Neb and putting it on the list for set precedence uh, is the key card to go ahead and do. You know, I really can't say Altair, and I can see why you hit Altair, but I can't say Altair because it just seems like, you know, with Wolf Bark at 3 and no one coming out, they don't really care about these, you know, these uh, easy one card XCs. They don't really care about that. Uh, but 
by lowering the consistency of the net, you know, it slows down the deck, you know, because <clears throat> right now, you can see the reliance that Teller Knights have on the deck when they run like Triple Ronin, they run Triple Nuke, you know, they're running these cards because they really want to get their Deneb set up, you know, you know, if the Deneb wasn't as important as it was, they probably wouldn't even run, you, know, cause you don't want to send anybody else, it's not like, oh yeah, Nuke send, no, Vega, oh, Nuke send, you know, Altair, no, it's always Deneb, and you run the Nuke just for the consistency of the Deneb. So, by lowering the consistency of the Deneb, like I said, this is the first initial hit. This will definitely not kill Talon Knight. You know, Talon Knight will still be a really good deck. But, uh, you know, will they be as busted as they are now? You know, with one Trevor and, you know, two Deneb? You know, the consistency is going to be lower. It's going to take them a little bit longer, you know, unless they open it up with the Triple Rota. But, like I said, this is just the initial hit. This is literally just like Cleese, where it's just like, you know, we hit Scout down to two. Yeah, you still have Triple Summoner's Heart. But, you know, we still lowered the consistency of the deck. So, as the first Elosha hit, I take the Deb to two, you know, set presidents, and, you know, it's already on the list, hey, you need to hit it again, hit it again, bam, Deb to one, here we go, you know, so, uh, definitely gonna go ahead and put Deb down to two. Alright, next card I have at two, I have lose one turn, and I thought, you know what, it's a little bit too certain for Konami to be hitting this card in the TCG, but then I thought, you know what, Konami doesn't like cards like this, I mean, in the LCG, they have triple skill drain. We hit skill drain out of one, so it's pretty obvious that Konami's like, you know what, nah, this card's not healthy, it's another floodgate. But, and of course, uh, when you look at it and compare it to skill drain, to an extent, it's a more balanced version of skill drain. But then, in another sense, they have no, it's not, because then, of course, the normal monsters, the normal summon decks can exploit it. And it's a healthy card, definitely, no. And I think that if it was a card that TCG Konami could choose to import instead of just being upset. I think that TCG Konami would have been like, you know what, no, we don't want this card. We just hit Skill Drain, why would we want this card? So, I think they would be like, you know what, it's a Skill Drain's card, but it's not as bad as Skill Drain. Let's go ahead and put it down to two. You know, that way, you have two lose one turn, one Skill Drain, you have three cards, you know, that's a nice round number in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! So, you know, I can go ahead and see it. I'm seeing putting lose one turn down to two. This time, if it continues to persist to be a problem, get it down to one. Simple as that, you know? Uh, it's, ever since they hit the skill down, drain down to one, has it been as bad? No, definitely not. Uh, but is it still skill drain? Of course, but, you know, vanities is still vanities. But, uh, you know, when you have triple lose one turn and the skill drain with, in the hands of Cleese and, you know, stuff like that, then it gets a little bit ridiculous. So, uh, I think they're gonna go ahead and hit lose one turn down to two this time. And then, uh, maybe one if it persists, but this is just a test to go ahead and hit down to and see what it does. Alright, and then my last card to two, I have, uh, Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. So, uh, yeah, my first direct Burning Abyss hit. Uh, Burning Abyss, uh, essentially they are stepping out. You know, they sold all their Burning Abyss support. And it's time to move out, you know, step away from the, the whole, like, hey, Burning Abyss is a TCG exclusive, and, you know, this is the deck. Go ahead and step away from the deck. Uh, just in the first initial hit, uh, just lower the consistency of Dante, just slow him down to two, because literally they're relying on Dante in the bur <coughs> oh, excuse me. In the Burning Abyss deck is uh, a little bit too much, you know. Just triple Dante, 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 Dante. So if we lower the kiss to CC, it's Dante, 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 two, and you gotta be a little bit more wiser with your Dantes. I was gonna think about hitting Firelight down to one, but, you know, so far, let's go ahead and see what Burning Abyss do with just two Dante, because it seems like we hit Dante down to two, it would slow down the deck a lot, because the reliance on Dante is a little bit too much. Uh, you know, they're not making any more cells on Burning Abyss, and it's a nice first initial hit. You know, if we gotta hit Firelight down to one, we can, but it doesn't seem like Firelight has been as popular as the card for Burning Abyss in this format. So, just looking at the deck, you can just clearly see that triple Dante is just a little bit too much. So, uh, just lower the consistency of Dante down to two as a first initial direct hit to burn to this. And I uh, watch it currently. Like I said, this is their first hit. First uh, acquisition, so you can get your first top on the head. You know, and you really can't compare the Dante to cards like Triv and Construct, who definitely deserve to be at one. Uh, Dante may, may be reliant on it just because it's a burning this monster and it's easier to go into because it's an XE. But, uh, you know, he's definitely not as powerful as, you know, Construct or, or Trevor, you know. He's just like, hey, I, I know I'm no three and I gain 500 attack three. So, yeah, is that okay? But then we're just like, hey, but then when I'm sent to Gregor, I get to go ahead and add the burning this card and, and I do all that play and I do it over and over and over and over again. Like, yeah, you know, if you want to go ahead and go, you know, even the fire, like, who couldn't be as potent with only, you know, two Dante. So, um, that's a nice initial hit for burning this. Alright, so those are all my cards. I have a two, a couple more than I have in part one. Alright, uh, then we'll go ahead and do cards of three. A lot of them are the same. Mine's the same. I think I have to make like one change from part part one. So, uh, of course, Temple of the Kings, you find, uh, uses the fact that Temple of the Kings will not return. It 
besides the card that got a ride and came back, it really didn't get played at all. So they're probably just gonna have to reset person and Chelsea D. Shane Spirit collectivated once for duel and it didn't get played at all, so they'll probably just move it up to three. Um, set presence OCG. So this is did get played at all in one and just how I said, uh not only set precedence, but they wanna make uh, they wanna make Sinister Shepherd a little bit more useful. And let's go ahead and put it up to three. Who cares? Uh uh Sacred Sword seven stars. You know, with Dragon Rivers banned, they're probably just gonna be like, hey, you know, didn't do anything at two, move it up to three. There you go, red eyes. You know, we're getting that in like I think August, so yeah. Uh Charger Light Brigade, you know, they moved it up to two, my swords did nothing. Also, this kind of promotes uh, Infernoid, so they'll probably just go ahead and move this up to 3. So, there you go, Infernoid slash Life Storm players, you finally have Charger Life Brigade at 3. You know, a handful of people are saying, like, oh, Honest to 3, like, no, no, no. You can't, you can't compare Charger Life Brigade to Honest, definitely, no. You know, uh, Charger Life Brigade only tutors Light Storms, Honest tutors every single Light Monster in Yu Gi Oh! So, no. Uh, next, Hornet 3. <clears throat> You know, OCG did it. They're just like, hey, let's see Hornet. Did nothing. Uh, it seems like they're, they're willing really to go ahead and step away, you know, from decks of the past like that. You know, they let up on then on Backlings. They let up on uh, on Gladiator Beast. So they're probably just gonna be like, you know what? There you go. You can have three Hornets. It's not gonna really change how you play. You still only have one Dragon Fight, and that's where Dragon Flash just stay. One. A ton of people are like, oh, Dragon Flash should go up to like two or maybe three. Like, no, Hornet can go up to three. Dragonfly needs to stay at one because Dragonfly is still the most busted one. You know, being able to summon out of your deck, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, the new card that I didn't have on part one, that I now have on part uh, two, card trooper, card trooper. Um, two troop dupe scoops, not really a thing. You know, if you want to machine dupe an actual deck, then you have death spots. Like, literally, death spots were made to go ahead and do troop dupe. So, uh, well, machine dupe. Abuse the hell out of that card. So, you know, card trooper, no. Nah. You go ahead and promote your Inferno Infernoids, more card trooper, and you know, set precedence from the OCD. There you go, card trooper to three. And then my last card three, I have Legendary Six Demo Shien. You can go up to three, as long as you only, I mean, as long as Gateway is banned, you can have three Shien. Now, you know, now you're not dead, now it's not like, oh, summon my Shien, oh, you killed it, oh, that's it, you know. And at least if you can go into another Shien, hey, more power to you. But yeah, you don't have Gateway, so as long as you don't have Gateway, at least you can't go, Shien, 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 Beast Barking, oh, no, ha, 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 like, oh my god, like, no. So. Um, yeah, there they go. So, like I said, I really wish I could hit Necros more, but I have no precedence, and, you know, I'm not gonna be, you know, Mr. Oh, I'm, I'm so conservative, I don't know, I hit this, hit this, hit this, because there, there, there's a thin line between being conservative and just being butthurt, and I'm not gonna cross that line, you know. Do I think Necros should hit harder than they are? Yes. Do I think Necros should hit harder than what I predicted? Yes, because... You know, with OCG saying, no, no changes, and Necro still being the number one deck, despite facing down, like, Infinity, like I said before, that's ridiculous. That's fucking ridiculous. So, is this hit hard enough? No. No. Even with this hit, they'll, it'll stop, still probably be deck number one in the OCG and the TCG. You know, especially since it's just gonna stay the best deck in the OCG, so even if we copy their hits, it'll it probably still stay the best deck. And TCG, then we'll meet at Worlds, people will take Necros, and... There you go. It'll win and it'll get hit in uh, the next list. So hopefully, uh, I swear to God, if TCG says no change. I will fucking, I will blow up a Konami building. Don't take that threat serious. But God, I would just be, I would, I would cry. I would cry. Uh, so there we go. It was, it's part two. Sorry, I had to just sit here and talk for fifty fucking minutes. Damn, Daniel. No wonder I was freaking coughing because I'm losing my voice. Hello. But uh, I had to come back. I promise I'd come back for part two. A couple of changes, but not much. Not as much as I wanted to. Because if I was going to go ahead and Necros, I'd say Unicorn, Gronic, Psycho to one, Manji to one, uh, Senju to two, and Shit to two. That would be my f uh, that would be my first initial hits. That would be my hits. But hey. Anyway, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed part two. So tell me what you guys think about OCG doing nothing and about my van list prediction part two in general. So. Of course, I will be seeing you guys on the CCG list, and hopefully it won't just be no changes. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. So, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and I will see you guys at the actual, uh, July 1st, uh, TCG ban list. Alright, people, thanks for watching.